Hello everybody, this is Amy from Chateau de Rosières and we're going to do you a series of 10 minute chateau tours which will introduce you to little corners of the chateau and some of the places we're going to be doing work in over the coming couple of years. Um, we're keeping it separate from the main episodes uh, where you'll see us working in places um, just so that you can get to know um, the chateau and the outbuildings and everything and place where it is we are when we're actually doing the work and we hope you find it interesting we're keeping it short so you don't get overwhelmed um, and I'm going to be writing some blogs about it as well on our website so if you go to our website which is chateaurosier.com then you can sign up for our newsletter and start to read some of the things about this and we really hope that you enjoy it. Here in the tower on the second floor, this room is a room I really like because it's uh, it's still in the condition it was probably a couple of centuries ago. It still has its original clay tiles, a uh, lot of uh, well old plaster, but we can see really beautiful stones underneath, and a uh, lot of uh, little arrow holes uh, to protect the flanks of the house. We have this massive piece of furniture behind me, which is a massive grain trunk that was probably assembled in this room because it doesn't fit through the door. Uh, that's really interesting because it was probably meant for storing the grain for the household. As this piece of furniture was too heavy to be moved and didn't have any great interest for the successive uh, owners of the chateau, it was, uh, it was left behind. So it's probably one of the, uh, the very few original pieces of furniture we have in the chateau. We'll have a bit of work uh, in this room because there's absolutely nothing. There's no electricity, there are no windows. We'll need to put some windows on the arrow loops and uh, everything. We'll have to renovate the floor because these, uh, very unfortunately uh, all the tiles are uh, just uh, disintegrating. Um, and it will be eventually my office. So I'm really looking forward to, to being able to, to sit here and uh, with books and uh, stuff. It's, uh, it's going to be a really nice place. Underneath the, the floor, we have a big gap. The, there's a, a big step to come in, inside the tower that's about 40 centimeters high. And what's really interesting is that underneath this floor, we found a lot of, uh, of junk that was uh, brought by uh, generations of rats and mice and uh, all sorts of animals. And amongst that junk, I found pages of a very old book. Uh, so there were about maybe 30 pages or so. And I had no clue what book it came from. So I just uh, searched from, uh, from the text on the internet and the, this book happens to be the story of Tom Jones which was a very shocking book in the 18th century and this, uh, the pages I found are uh, one of the first French translations around uh, 1760 or something like that. The, interestingly, the owner of the chateau at that time was the General de l'Etrange, who was a nobleman who was born in this house, but he went on the, he went on the side of the revolution later, which was really uncommon and quite shocking as well for a nobleman at the time. And, the, and so it's really likely that this book belongs to him. 
This is underneath the the floor where I found the the book, and there's still some junk. Do you like my arty picture? I'm an artist. Mark has given you the basics of the L'Etrange Tom Jones story and I just want to go into a little bit more detail because it's completely fascinating. I think we're going to come back a lot to the L'Etrange family because uh, they've got a remarkable history that goes involves murder, inheritance scandals, um, revolutionaries, and wars, cannibalism, all sorts of things. But this particular story is about the Tom Jones book and I have the pages that we found here in this envelope. There were only, we found about 30 pages, um, and they're, but they're still bound together. And this is an edition from, we think, around 1762. You see the edges are still rough cut and it's a very, very old book. It looks like the sort of thing that might have been an actual book under hidden somewhere and bits of it have been ripped off by rats or whatever to build their nest. Um, it's the only book that was under there which is what gives us uh, cause to think that it was hidden in some way. It could of course have been dropped but the fact that it's quite a controversial book um, and it's on its own makes me think that it was hidden deliberately. Um, this is a document signed by Louis L'Etrange. It's L'Etrange just like Bellatrix Lestrange in Harry Potter if you're as big a fan of Harry Potter as I am. And we have a history of the L'Etrange family. What we know is that Louis de L'Etrange was born in Rosière in 1749 and Tom Jones, this edition was in about 1762. So it could have been in this house any time from when Louis was about 13 up until he left for the wars. He was first in the Queen's Cavalry in 1773, so he was 24 at that time. So sometime in his teens or early 20s, he could have been looking at this book and what's really, really interesting, as Mark was saying, is that um, Louis was part of the French aristocracy, which were Catholic. Now, um, this book, Tom Jones, written by Henry Fielding, was anti-Jacobite. And the Jacobites were the British monarchy who were Catholic at the time, who were um, chased out of, the, uh, out of England uh, during the Glorious Revolution, as it's called. And lots of Jacobites actually fled to France. And as a member of the French Catholic aristocracy, Louis de Letrange would not have been expected to have any sort of sympathies uh, towards people who were against the Jacobites. They were very much the friend of the aristocracy. And bear in mind that in France at this time, it was the lead up to the French Revolution. We also know that Louis sold Rosière in 1790 which was a year after the French Revolution started. And we also know that Louis was, became a revolutionary. He switched sides by 1792. I'll take that all back for you and start to run over it again. Louis de Letrange uh, joined the Queen's Cavalry in 1773, so he's 24 years old then. By the time he was 40, he had gone from being a French Catholic nobleman fighting for the Queen to a revolutionary, which is a huge thing. Mm. At the same time, he sold Rosier in 1790. So he's around about 40. He realised he'd never been here um, for the last 10, 15 years. He was fed up of it. It was falling into ruin and he sold it. And we have um, the articles of sale for that. 
this little piece of evidence fitted together with the history no history that we know, which is of a very unusual young man, Louis, who decided to throw off all of his trappings of wealth and stature and fight for the revolution, that this book published when he was in his formative years was hidden somewhere in the chateau is fascinating. This isn't something that the family that came after who bought the chateau off Louis, is nothing they would have read. They were extremely good Catholics. Um, not to say, to say the least, it was 30 years after this edition, but they then held the chateau right up until the 1960s. They had it for a very long time. Um, and that's what leads us to believe that this book was bought, hidden, read in that period by Louis de Letrange.